Welcome back to Dino Vidala Show. It's Friday, third hour. It's time for what just happened. Today is August 11th. I got three great people who've been on before. First, Judy Gold, two-time Emmy Award winner, stand-up comedy special, HBO Comedy Central, and more, and had a great run that I went to see of her hit off-Broadway show. Yes, I can say that, which I think you're touring with now, right, Judy? Yes, welcome back. we're starting in January. Thank you. You Thank are. You. That's great. Thank you for coming. With your lovely sure. girlfriend, who's and it's much great. nicer and than you. Okay. Huh. She is. Well, that's why, well, you know, that's how it works. Also, Eric Bronstein's back, my buddy. He's a comedy comedian, writer. He's been on, of course, Sirius XM, this show, and many others. TMZ, CBS. He's written jokes for Weekend Update and more. Eric, good to see you. Eric Bronstein. Hey, good to be here. Good to be back. And Brian McFadden coming to us live from Sirius XM Studios. Like <laughs> she went in when everyone else is doing virtual. Brian McFadden is here, a great comedian. The yep. uh, done voiceovers on movies like Ice Age and then been the TV shows and one of the funniest guys out there. Brian Scott McFadden. I bow to Brian Scott McFadden. I bow thank, to him. Thank you. I, uh, thank you. And likewise, I, I, I bow to the one and only uh, Judy Gold. She can say whatever she wants now. That's right. Yes, I can say that. And, and you she, can go I, wherever the fuck you want to go, Brian. Yeah. Brian, you can go. I showed up yeah. for work. I showed up yeah. at the building where I thought that they... Are you upstairs or are you at home, Dean? <laughs> no, if I was upstairs, I would let you in and we would do... You could join yeah. me. No. We, okay. on, two, on midweek, we go in and on the edges on Friday and Monday, we don't go in and the other days, it depends. But... I'm glad you're here. Last time I saw Brian was Tuesday, no, Sunday at the comic strip. And he showed up late for his spot and then wanted to switch with me because I was going on next just so he could leave early. I'm like, that's no, not I, I heard works. he I heard he went to Sirius he XM serious, to show up. Right. I tried to do a show in the lobby. OK, <laughs> no, he he went to um, the comic strip. Uh, what's the fuck? I, it would have been so funny if I could think of a comic strip <laughs> office. <laughs> you know, comic strip office. He went to, you know. Um, no, he, what's he, fucking, you know, what, uh, uh, New York comedy club where you look up at Caroline's, it's closed. That would have been, a no, I movie. was thinking of a Danger comic, D- like Fields. a real comic strip. Oh. He went to so-and-so's oh. house. He went to they, Gilbert's they, house. He went, right. yes, yes, uh, Gilbert's yeah. house. That's, that's what, but it didn't Scott, come in my head. Is. Yeah, let's not bring up Gilbert anymore though. That's yeah, right. He's a fuckhead. So okay. Brian's doing shows right now. Brian's doing shows in the lobby at Sirius XM, which is great. Like, who books that? Brian, we're going to have, like, an open mic there on Thursday. Thanks, Dean. I appreciate it. I appreciate you shibbing me on that show the other night when you wouldn't uh, switch with me. But, for no uh, reason. He just showed up late for his spot, so the other comic went on, and he wanted to go on. And like, why? I want to leave. I want to leave. I, all right, let's not make this about me. And, and so let's talk about good news first. Ohio voters on Tuesday rejected the Republican effort to raise a threshold to amend the constitution of their state from 50% to 60%, but it really was a proxy vote on abortion rights because that's on the ballot in November. These guys just don't get it. They're getting destroyed on this issue. And she just, and so Judy, what's your reaction? This is going to be the issue in 2024. I just, I don't, they just uh, keep it up. Please, please, please keep it up. Uh, um, what ha- oh, uh, it's just, it's incredible because did my mic go out? No, it's fine. No, it's on. Okay. It's perfect for the um, show. That just because people claim to be pro-life doesn't mean they're not pro Roe v. Wade. So there are people who are pro Roe v. Wade uh, and also pro-life. And also, keep your fucking politics off of my body. You don't want to have an abortion? You don't believe in abortion? Then don't have one, okay? I don't believe in, you know, guns being available to criminals without background checks and cut the shit cut the shit this is this issue is not going away and i hope they continue to run on this issue because women have had it up to their fucking clits vaginas <laughs> whatever you want yeah. okay. uh, brian you know, I think we need a man's perspective on this. No, we, we don't. Do. I don't think Please, we need a counterpoint now. Yeah. Brian's no, like fat and from the Trump, lobby. I'm Go saying ahead. that uh, Donald Trump is the pro life candidate. We need to emphasize that. If you're pro life, pro, pro, he Donald Trump is always been very staunch supporter of the pro life position, as anyone knows. And yeah. I think that we, that needs to be out there. He's very pro life. If you want to um, take away a woman's uh, right to choose, he's your guy. I mean, I mean, that's a guy. He's he's been he's been very supportive of this position, and I think that needs to get out there. Pro-life Donald Trump, make that clear. That's very, very important right. that we it's, emphasize that. 
but first of all, it's not pro-life, it's forced birth. But forced Donald birth. Yes, thank you. thank you. Thank you, I'm just trying to help you. You're in the lobby, represent well. <laughs> <laughs> if you do well in the lobby, we invite you upstairs. It's like Johnny Carson. You get to come to yeah. you perform well in the lobby. You get to sit in the, But no, but here's the thing. Donald Trump literally said on the CNN town hall, which ended up causing Chris Light his job at CNN, he literally said, I terminated Roe v. Wade. And I was honored to do so. He said terminated. And then terminated, later on, of course. Right. And on another interview, he said, I was proud to overturn Roe v. Wade because he did the three justices. That's going to be running against him. All If he's a nominee, that's going to be everywhere in the country. Donald Trump says, I'm proud to overturn Roe v. Wade and usher in essentially religious fascism in this country. Mm-hmm. So, Eric, what about you? What's your reaction to all this? Well, I agree with Judy um, about how that uh, they should keep running on this because they <laughs> I know there was some big pro-life group that said that every a candidate should be supportive of a national ban. And if they have to do that, they're they're going to have some problems, I think. I mean, if Trump is on the record saying he just wants a national ban, you think that's going to help him? But it's also, Dean, you're yes. right. We, they, we don't have good messaging. They have pro-life. They have parents' rights. They have these fucking forced birth. That's what they should be called, forced birth. I am forced birth. That's right. Liz Winstead was here last week to make that. I love you, Liz Winstead. He says this many, many times. And that's how it has to be framed. But the thing is, Judy, they're not changing. So they had the Ohio Secretary of State who's trying to run against Sherrod Brown in Ohio on TV the next morning. And what does he say about they got dropped 57 percent to 43 percent? He goes, well, one point seven million people voted with us. And that's the most important part. (laughs) And he goes and then he doubles and triples down on the idea of anti-abortion and their out-of-state radicals. They won't change. Like they keep losing. They don't care. They think they're religious fundamentalists that right. you're dealing with here. Right. So nothing's going to change. That's what's right. so dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's why the Republicans are always like, oh, 75 million people voted for Trump. I'm like, yeah, but 81 million voted against him. I don't right. understand. <laughs> the, the math is there. But uh, can I just say something? I think the messaging issue is, is an absolute, absolute true uh, thing. I think that's absolutely dead on. And I think that, um, you know, uh, Republicans have never had a problem you know, uh, sending kids who don't belong here back to where they came from. So, you know, when it comes to immigration, <laughs> right? Don't, don't think of it as a uh, abortion. Think of it as a celestial deportation. Okay? <laughs> that, I my, like it. That's my take on it. I can't wait. The security comes with the Brian has to leave the lobby. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're gonna... in the lobby. Okay? You're lucky. The security is mostly liberals. I've gone. Through, I vetted them myself. So they're <laughs> they're on your side. Like if you were doing pro Trump stuff, they might actually come. <laughs> like this is Manhattan, buddy. You got to oh, get yeah. out of here. So let's talk about the. So uh, this morning, uh, Judge Ch- uh, Chutkin had the first oral argument on in the Trump January sixth. I call it the. The coup, the attempted coup case, they call it election interference. It was right. the attempted coup case, just like the classified documents is not that. It's espionage. She's charged with 32 counts of espionage, framing matters. In any event, in the attempted coup case today, Judge Chutnik, Chutkin ultimately ruled in favor of Trump's lawyers on part of it, but her language was so important. She said point blank that freedom of speech is not absolute. And she, the fact that he's running a campaign currently has to yield to the administration of justice. And if that means he can't say exactly what he wants to say in a political speech, that is just how it's going to have to be. Boom. So she set the parameters. She's a very pro-defense judge. She's a former public defender. Her rulings have been, Trump could have gotten a better judge in terms of fairness, but the worst judge ever in terms of not putting up the BS, no delay. There's not going to be delays with her. Deadlines are deadlines. So Judy, how do you feel about this? We're finally seeing a real judge, not Judge Aileen Cannon, who's she's the legal defense team. What she's a real fuck? judge. She's not going to put up yeah. with this bullshit. This is so vitally important. But, you know, she can say whatever he wants, and he'll continue to go to those those rallies, those KK Klan meetings, and say whatever the fuck he wants. He does not... He There's no repercussions for what he says. He'll, you know, he's been intimidating witnesses. He's caught, I mean, I know we'll talk about Fawny Willis, but like the peop, these people are getting racist, racist attacks against them, uh, threats, uh, their, their, their families are threatened because of his rhetoric. And yet he seems to defy them at every step. And how do you enforce this? How do you enforce this? He's never going to jail. How do you enforce him not being able to say this shit? At some point, he might go to jail. She also said that they're going to want, she'll be very aware of the words he says. 
She's been the harshest sentences of January 6th defendants of any judge in the federal right. system. If he gets convicted on four felonies, it's not going to Mar-a-Lago. He's going to go to prison. She's going to, and then look, there might be an appeal and they try to do different things. But so what do you think, Brian? I mean, is this, are we getting towards accountability for Donald Trump? Can you see it on the horizon or do you think ultimately he just escapes it? I think, I think it's funny that uh, people talk about personal accountability. I mean, they never, I, I never understand. <laughs> They treat Trump Trump like a special needs child who can't uh-huh. be expected to comport himself in like this any kind of you know normal way. It just fascinates me the low level of expectation that they have. You talk about like like just having absolutely no regard or respect for the person that you're following, not not actually you know allowing them to just do whatever. All this self destruct is stuff that Trump is doing. It's not a deep state co. It's like autoerotic asphyxiation, what he's mm-hmm. doing. He's completely nuking himself on a daily basis and they're cheering it on. I don't think this serves a purpose other than whipping up the base, which weren't going to be alienated to begin with. So I, I don't I, I don't really see what what other than just this it's a show. It's like a reality show and and our system has never been been faced with something of this kind of just like ridiculousness where this person usually a gag order is supposed to be a gag order you go to jail or you go you know it's like it's like amazing i just like the fact that she's she's saying that it's a scheduling issue like because he, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's funny about the fact that you know trump is going to go to jail because his google calendar they can't fit the two things in or something <laughs> You've got to have, if you're going to schedule a coup or overthrow the government or be tried for that, you really have to get someone who's really a good, uh, organized person to handle that. So you're scheduling so you can get, go to jail and then deal, you know, then say what you want later. You know what I mean? It's very important. I, I, and to that point, like she, the defense attorneys want to have the trial after the election. They're like, but Trump's running for office. And she's like, we're not going to have any of that here. And the point is, you running for office, just like saying, oh, I know I'm charged with felonies, but I have a job and I can't miss work. And <laughs> right, right. It's the same thing. It's just a job. In fact, he's applying for a job. So he doesn't even have the job. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to go I, to I, jury I, duty, I, yeah, even so. though you have a job. I'm applying for a job for the next few months. So I really uh-huh. can't be here. It's like, get the. No, she said point blank. It's going to. So I love Eric. I got love this one part because in it, the judge said, Judge Shutkin said to Trump's lawyers that she's concerned that Trump might, his commentary is trying to denigrate witnesses and tr- trump's lawyer actually says you may have mr pence in mind right like he volunteered what happened because because trump had attacked pence over the weekend saying he went to the dark side and he thinks he's a tough guy now look we're from you're from new york right eric yeah when you say someone's trying to be a tough guy isn't that an invitation to others to challenge that person like trump posted mm-hmm. last week mike pence thinks he's a tough guy that i'm from jersey you say that you're telling other people like oh he thinks he's a tough guy. hey tough guy hey tough guy <laughs> that's so right he, that's what he wants to confront them so eric what do you think how is this going to go down with mike pence well no oh. but I, I i think some of this might be working as far as setting parameters for trump because did you read that article now where he when he talks about the election he always says in my opinion i won he His doesn't just say it anymore right. so yeah. I feel like maybe some of this legal stuff is having an effect on him because he's not just out. He's he's putting up certain legal markers, I think, now. I don't know, though. It's, but it's, he plays uh, off that, Eric. Right. Like, he's like, he he plays, look what they're doing to me. I'm such a victim, you know? <laughs> now they're telling me I can't talk about this. Oh, oh, and they're doing it right before the Iowa. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and these people believe him. This That's is- what is so fucking crazy. That's why we need cameras in the, the courtroom we need cameras uh, I, in the courtroom we should all be able to see what happens to that motherfucker i agree by the way quick thing i love the irony of of judy saying that trump there has to be a limits what he can say and you're the star of the show yes i can say that <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no i think he he's i mean look he can no, say whatever the different. fuck he wants but you know you can you can intimidate right. witnesses right. and stuff like that you know yes if you're telling a joke you can say whatever the fuck you want if you get if you get offended then that's I'm sorry. Yeah, that wasn't bad. a fair criticism. Right. It's just fun for me to say. That's what okay. I'm sorry. Go fuck yourself. It's, exactly. <laughs> I, I deserve that. Judy Gold and Eric Bronstein and live from the lobby. It's Brian Scott McFadden. This should be a show because Brian's eyes dart around as he looks around as people walking through <laughs> right. the security delivery guys. Like we're 13 floor like, <laughs> yeah. over there. Like this is great. I actually think it's a funny. We should do as a show. Like put all the yeah. comics in different locations. Like where are you today, Judy? And then Judy's like, I'm on 42nd and 9th. 
hang out here and then you tell why do going. i have to be on 42nd and 9th <laughs> can i be in a better area okay the upper east side like no. about less trendy. noise okay. put a comic in an escape room you know and then yeah. just have him try to get out I, yeah I, i'm with you all right so we've got jack smith the special counsel who is the john wick of prosecutors i like to say because he is haunting trump and he'll never die nothing you can do he wants a trial date uh, in the coup case of january 2nd Eric, what do you think? Do you think the judge is going to tell us August 28th, the actual trial date? So we have to wait. It's like a reality show. She could yeah. have said it today, but she's going to wait to August 28th. I like this game. So what do you think? Do you think the trial is going to happen early in your heart? Do you think the trial is going to happen early in 2024? What day is election day? November 9th? November, some, November 8th, I think. All right. So November 9th is when the trial is going to start. In my ah, opinion. <laughs> interesting. You think after the after the election? I don't. I just they're going to find ways to put, push it off. I don't know how. I mean, they'll try, but I don't know. It's I want it sooner. I wish Jack Smith would ask for January 6th. Sixth, yeah, yeah. Uh, that but, would have been perfect. But, so you know, two 6th. on the nose. And then wild. he would. Oh, and then, you know, Trump would be going, oh, and he wants the trial on January. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love also at all his speeches when he, you know, they were all yelling bullshit, bullshit, and they're beeping it out. They're beep you're be beeping out bullshit on these cable news channels when every one of those people has had to repeat his, his, you know, his verbiage and have all said shit already. You know, like hear it. Don't beep it out. That's I'm what he. You. That's how he talks. So, yes, he can say that. I agree. He yeah, he can. Um, yeah. Brian, when do you think in your heart? When do you think the trial date might actually happen? In this I, one I, case. You know, I, I, this, this is so insane that I don't even. I mean, I just love the fact. Once again, we're scheduling this. Like, <laughs> you have to schedule. Right. There's a, a, a new coup app. You know, they're, they're like help you schedule your coup or your uh, trial for treason. In a better way. I have no idea what his evite looks like uh, for this thing, but I have no. But all I know is that I have absolutely no idea. I, I've stopped even trying to rationalize or come up with things to explain what's going to happen in this because it's such a it's such a, a bizarre reality show here. It's crazy. It, it, I hope it's still going on. Yeah. It, look, I think she's going to set a trial date of March, and it's going to be a firm trial date. And you know, Jack Smith's team said it'd take four to six weeks to try the case. It'll be longer than that. But if you start in March, it's over. Here's the fairness. You do it in March. He's convicted by June. Then the Republican National Convention is two months away. They can go at the convention and pick someone else if they want to. But, Judy, what if they don't? What if he's convicted of attempting a coup? And then we watch on national TV. They nominate him. What would that say about the GOP? We already know what this GOP is about. What does it that say about the GOP? Yeah. <laughs> It's they're just more him. of the same, huh? They're gonna nominate him. I know to they're gonna nominate no. him. And if he gets in jail, it's even more entertaining, See, right? Like, they, it, they're not. Who else is? They're they're going to nominate, him. right? Not, that he, is a hundred. It's not. They're not Republicans. They're fucking MAGA mentals. That's what they are. They're mental MAGAs. And they are going to nominate him. I, the we, the Republican I, Party that I grew up with, it has not even resembles nothing of these people and it, and their issues and, and their they were awful, their opinions. Man. Yeah, they and were he, terrible. And he can do his whole campaign from jail. He could. Which would be fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the most fun campaign way, ever. Yeah, and you know what? Orange is the new black. So there you go. <laughs> Well, he could have rallies in the courtyard where the other prisoners come out and they're like, and they're yeah, four more years. It's like, no, I don't want to serve four more oh, years. Oh, but his hair is going to look like shit. Uh, <laughs> well, by the way, don't underestimate the importance of the entertainment factor here. Yeah. Because the reason that uh, DeSantis is, is, is doing so poorly is because the guy has absolutely no charisma. No, he's the most boring. Uh, the worst person on the planet. So that's the reason why he. I don't even understand these guys that are jumping in. This is what I don't understand. People jumping in, they go, this is a reality TV guy, okay? This mm -hmm. this guy, it, it's in this day and age, the, he is so much better at this game than they are. Whatever you want to say about Trump, he's good at this insane. And so when he if he goes to jail, that's going to be, oh, my God, what a great plot twist. How, that, what's going to happen there? And that is an appeal. Season four. Yep. Plot Season. That, right. that look to this as a, as a catharsis of outrage.
That's interesting. Thanks. But if you guys all saw Shawshank Redemption, I assume, I mm-hmm. imagine we all saw yes. it. If Donald Trump goes in prison, would you bet he would cry the first night to see that new fish that <laughs> cries? Or does he stay strong <laughs> like Tim Robb? Like, if you had a vote, Judy, you think Donald Trump He will be shitting in, in his diaper. That is what he will be doing the entire Eric, time. what do you think? Well, shitting he's, in his diaper. Crook, he's definitely crying, he's, pooping. He's definitely not going to be doing anyone's taxes. I wouldn't let him do it. So, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, yeah. Like Tim Robbins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andy, yeah. Andy Dufresne. Mm-hmm. It's, Brian, what do you come down on? Did he cry? What? Does he lose? He's the new fish that cries at night and he breaks or he stays oh, strong? Would, oh God, would I look that would be really entertaining to see him being dragged into the into the uh cell by his feet, you know, like they do in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is rigged. This is a horrible yeah. prison. This is the worst prison I've ever been in. This is like it's it, well now, but I, also I would love <laughs> for some person of color to be like you fucking racist piece of shit we're not putting up with your fucking white supremacy in here i I just i I mean there's just so many there's so many fantasies i have of him in jail that the skinheads would rally to his defense i mean you've got that so he'd be king of the skinheads because they're right and he 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 hates those people you know he'd be like what do you come on well he's a a skinhead too though right he is when the wind blows well he's not yeah that's true when the wind I said on MSNBC that I, I that I hope that he gets convicted and dies in prison, and that came out the wrong way because they thought people were saying like, "What do you want to get like shanked in the in the shower?" I'm like, "No, no, I meant die of natural causes, spend the rest of his life in prison." Right, so I right, just right. Be clear. I think I sincerely want Donald Trump to spend his last day alive on this earth in prison as a warning to anyone. You attempt a coup. This yes. is what you get. Bye and bye in the now. country, that's what happens. Like yep. this is insane that we even yep. have. Like I'm the mean guy for saying that on MSNBC. No, no, that's the way it works when you want to it, save your republic. You put the it guy wasn't, in jail forever. It, it wasn't a coup. It was a walking tour. Come on, let's be honest now. <laughs> so, all right, so let let's shift gears here. It doesn't end though. We've got Trump now. It's at well Fulton County DA. It's been a long wait. I think next week we're going to get indictments, and they might be sprawling. Now Donald Trump's got an ad running. Where he attacks Jack Smith and Alvin Bragg and Tis James. Oh God, it's so campaign. racist. Yeah. It is. But think about this. It's an official, it's not like a super PAC. It's his official campaign ad. He's spending campaign dollars. It's not about the economy or jobs or inflation. It's literally attacking four prosecutors who are investigating him. This is the world we live in today. How insane is this? But I mean, this is what what the judge was saying. This is you you how is that okay? How is that okay as a campaign ad? When you're not supposed to uh, intimidate witnesses. And can I can I just say, as a commercial actor, I didn't audition for this at all, and I didn't. <laughs> and I was like, I could have. You know what I mean? You want to? Yeah, but you know what, I Brian? I hope they didn't go non-union on these spots. Well, probably uh, and you I, did such a good job in uh, in the insurrection. I thought you were so good. <laughs> I, I, and I, I can't believe you were nominated for an Emmy. You were I'm like kidding. so angry. I'm still getting residuals from that. Yeah. yeah I, li- I liked your Viking helmet. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And the pooping on cue, as Judy talks about in Iraq, yeah. which is such a yes. funny joke. It's really, I've Thank repeated you. that joke on occasion uh, mm. on, on stage. No, to mm. friend, to, I told Hendon, I'm like, this is such a funny joke because I have so many pooping issues. So let's yeah. not get into it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Exactly. I'm neurotic. What did can you, I tell you? Did you know that Viking guy is out of prison? I just found that out. He's in a halfway house. Yeah. I, oh, that's well, insane. He's been serving. It's tw- he was. He didn't get any bail. He was held. Then he pled guilty and served two years. I mean, we're two years and a half. We're two. We're getting. It's just crazy. He was served four years. He served two and a half, and now he's in halfway house. Where is he going to go for the rest of the half? The other half. (laughs) Hey now, that guy's got to change his look for job interviews. I'm like, you're. (laughs) Aren't you the guy? Yeah, right. (laughs) It's like, oh yeah, I shouldn't wear face paint to the interview here. So, (laughs) so look, this is. Do you, but in your heart. Fawn, but can I just say something? Fawny Willis uh, mm-hmm. is getting racist threats. She told her staff, ignore everything. Do not react. Do not say anything. You know, they should do, we should do an ad with the uh, six co-conspirators and him. Well, how does it work? What, what, what's your I idea? don't know. We could do a little like, a I don't know, maybe. Brian can play one of the six. Yes. Giuliani. Would you play Giuliani? There's six are Giuliani. I want to do Giuliani. I want to do Giuliani. <laughs> She's Giuliani. You I'm got, Giuliani. We have John Eastman, who's kind of like, you know, you could play John Eastman with the glasses 
Brian. I mean, you're younger than him, but you can, ha- you can carry that law professor. I'm versatile. Yeah. Does, doesn't he wear that weird cowboy hat? He, he does. And Cindy, there's Cindy Powell. Who's the guy from Richard Nixon administration with the tattoos on him that has a swinger wife? Oh, Roger, Roger Stone. Stone. Oh, yeah. Roger Stone's not been indicted in this. Roger Stone's got his own shit going on that he's not yeah. in all this. But look, how much we saw the guy in Utah. You guys, I'm sure you saw the story. He big time Trumper. And instead of surrendering to the FBI, he points yeah. a gun at them and they kill him. Right. And it's yeah. never nice. I mean, for a 74 year old man to go out like that. But that was his choice. He made a choice to die for Trump as opposed to surrendering. And Trump really appreciates it, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. But how much more violence? I mean, in your heart, all BS aside, start with you, Brian. Does Donald Trump want just the fear of violence? Or do you think he really wants his people to start avenging him even more and begin attacking prosecutors and the witnesses in the courthouse? Wow. Wow. You're, you're, asking, uh, you're asking to get into the psyche of... Uh... No, what do you think? I, well, you've lived, we've lived with this guy for eight years. He's aged the crap out of me. I, I, I don't I think, want to I talk think, about him, but I, I have no choice. I think, I think, I mean, that's a, that's a difficult question. I mean, I think, I think There's Trump no is so delusionally, no, I think Trump is so uh, Im- immersed in his own psychological tormented uh, world that he lives in that I don't even know if he can tell the difference between fantasy and reality. I think everything is like a show to him and he doesn't, he doesn't even care or even recognize he's such a narcissist. He's like a little kid. He doesn't even know what's going I don't, I, I genuinely don't even think there's like this, this, this deep thought about it. It's just when everybody's against me, uh, fight for me, he's like a child. And, and, and so whether it's, you know, it has external repercussions of, of the stuff that he says, but I don't, I don't think Trump asking for, is, is Trump sincere about this? Hmm, let's see. <laughs> I, I, it's interesting though. You can talk about it like a baby because yeah. the media is like, they cover him like a child. Like today, Donald Trump is like, you see the, the crawl. He's angry today. He's Donald Trump colicky today. Like it's yeah. just all this bullshit over and over. Like that's how they cover him. Judy, Trump wants the trial, his trial to be televised. Do you think he he really believes like it's a reality show and he'll get to get up and talk during the court and get the attention away from? Oh him? my God, he is he thinks that he's gonna be the like host of it, right? <laughs> he is so. He, I, yes, he wants it televised, but I want it televised. I want because what happens is these these reporters go in. And they can spin it any way they want. And every network is going to spin it according to which way they lean and let people see for themselves. But then again, we we saw the the insurrection and people were like, oh, it's just, you know, they were just like, you know, yeah. just, you know. Don't forget, don't, forget, don't forget, by the way, this is a guy who ran for president simply because he got. Uh, he got insulted at a roast. Right, right, yeah. right. That is the only reason people forget that, but that is the genuinely, and I'm not even joking about that. That's he, true. That's absolutely got, true. And anyone that that no, that is absolutely true. He got dissed by the president, and he's not used to that. He's and not Seth Meyers. And, and Seth, we, yeah, but it was Obama that what really Obama fucking dug that, that really in. Got, and he just said, "I got it." I got to one up this guy. I and he didn't one-up. think he was going to win either. No, like he, he had no idea. No, he and he's win. so, he, he doesn't fucking not. read. He doesn't. I want a president right, who knows how to read. <laughs> yelling about this guy. By the I way, hate that I, fucking I asshole. I interviewed Seth Meyers a couple of years ago and I asked him about the incident, you know, the, the roast and how it went. And, and Seth said he saw Trump a few years later and Trump was still angry. Like he took it very personal. Like this is right. not, it was much deeper than we thought. Because it wasn't a charade. He was really angry and said, said like, that's kind of odd. I didn't expect that. I thought that being humiliated, being humiliated is the, that's why Trump responds to like the Lincoln Project. And right. people like, mm. he's so triggered by stuff like that. He can't, it doesn't even matter. People don't realize how sensitive he is to eat, to eat the slightest slight. And when he was publicly humiliated in front of a group of people and politicians and swells in Washington, that was the ultimate humiliation. Anybody that right. ever. Watch the heckler get slammed by a comedian and humiliated knows how cutting and brutal that can be. Well, yeah. Happening, right. You, you know, it's funny. Right. Though, I, I know one of the comics who wrote one, some of those jokes and I used to needle him. I'm like, thank you for breaking the world. Because basically. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, you you know, but, you know, that's where comedy is really a weapon. And, you know, there's nothing you cannot 
there's no way to fight back from humiliation, especially if you don't have that skill. No. And as yeah. Mark Twain said, under the assault of laughter, nothing can stand. Yeah. And when you are being laughed at, that is the most humiliating, you know, especially when you can't, you can't laugh at yourself. And everything, yeah. yeah. Everything come, came from that. Right. All everything. everything. It all comes from comedy. It just, all right. It's God, true. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. That's why they try to shut us up. Why do you think Hitler tried to shut them up? Shut up the the um, cabaret people. But right. that's why Judy's a whole. I love show. mentioning yes, I Hitler. I have to. <laughs> but um, let's, but I have one, just one quick. Okay, okay, so. a Hitler reference. We need a solid Hitler. Yes, oh, I thought it was have. good. We just feel that. And serious XM, that's the rule. Eric, last thing before we go to a quick break. No, I was going to say, don't you want to see the the trial on TV? Because it, it might have like a few good men moment where he'll actually admit to like. Ordering the code red you or the You can't coupe. handle the truth, that yeah. kind of yeah. stuff. Oh. Yeah, he goes, Did you order the coop? You're damn right I did. You know, I that feel like be, that could happen. He'll never Yeah, testify. but I watched the OJ trial and that that was yeah. That, he, never if, the stand, is, he never took the stand. It, Trump o, OJ took the stand. Didn't OJ take the stand? He had to no. put the gloves on. Oh no, he didn't. The, in no, the Trump but trial, that was Trump, good acting. Trump's, he should have gotten never, an Emmy for that. Trump's never going to take the, trial, the stand either. Yeah. There's no way yeah. in the world. It doesn't His happen. lawyers won't let him, probably. But, but what Trump will do is give press conferences every day after the trial and be able to tell his story that way, right. but not to a jury. So he'll, his minions will love it. And all right, let's take a break and come back, and we're going to shift gears and talk about some other things. They may be fun. They may not be. But Barbie hitting a billion dollars. Also, the, the WGA strike is now a little over 100 days. I have friends who are writers. A friend I was just texting with earlier. And it's really the beginning to hurt financially. Yeah. Like the pain is building. So yeah. I want to talk about that. Let's take a break and come back with more of what just happened. Our friends, Judy Gold, Eric Bronstein, and Brian Scott McFadden right after this. Ready? And welcome back. Dino Bidala Show. We're live here Friday, August 11th, continuing with what just happened. And our friends, Judy Gold, Eric Bronstein, and live from the lobby at Sirius XM, it's <laughs> Brian Scott McFadden. That should be the name of the show. I'm not kidding. That's like the announcer. And live from the lobby, it's Brian Scott McFadden. I think it's show. so cute that he went there. I, I'm not <laughs> mocking him. I applaud you for the extra effort. It's really good. I, 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 I was the one guy who decided not to work from home on the day that everyone right. was the And it's Friday, Brian. No I, one yeah. goes to the office Brian, on Friday. I, I just got him said, I sent you a Zoom link with no address and you showed up at the office. How did that, <laughs> how does that happen? Because you could look up the address. But, but is it, I is it? Something, but I got to look up the address. You know what it is, Dean? The last time I did your show, I was in the studio, right? I mean, that was that. No, I, we I, did I, it, you were on by Zoom. No, oh, it's so funny. because there's, there's no Also, difference. I think the listeners need to know that, that Brian sent an email out uh, hey, I'm downstairs. They say I'm not on the list. <laughs> Everyone. I thought he was, at my, I thought he was okay. at my apartment building. I'm like, he's coming into my apartment? I thought you were here in my apartment building. I got to clean. But is it, is it, isn't it? I'm like at the limelight or Studio 54. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't, pre- isn't Fox News across the street? Why don't you go in there? Yeah. And <laughs> Let's have it. That'd be more funny. fun. I'm booked there, too. So I got to hurry. All right. So let's talk about. Well, on the upside, the Barbie movies made over a billion dollars and destroyed Ben Shapiro and all the, especially Ben Shapiro and the right wing. And Bill Maher. And mm. Bill Maher, what a dumb thing. What a, I don't know. Yeah. What, look, Bill Maher just wants to stay relevant. I mean, let's be honest. And he's been able right. to do it for 20 something years. So for that, I have to tip my hat to him. I, I'm not a fan, but he stayed relevant by playing these little games and he does it. Right. Ben Shapiro is a true believer. Oh, ben Shapiro thought his fucking right. mind. <laughs> when is right. he going to come out of the closet? Okay. <laughs> and, and we don't want him, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be married to a, a transgender woman or man because he's yeah. so offended and triggered by transgender people. Oh that my I think God. That's what you're going to see. Yeah. What do you, Bar- did any of you see the Barbie movie? Yes. Movie? You did. Yes. And? Yes, 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 yes. That's, yes, you enjoyed it. You're- you know what? what? It's, it is, it's a film. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a film. It's very feminist. Uh, it's also a lot of, you know, Ken plays a huge part in it as well. And, you know, as a f- female, um, I have watched women being degraded and uh, objectified. And, you know, we, On it, show. it's a film. It's a fucking film. And you know what? Money talks. One billion dollars. Sorry, Ben. Sorry, Bill. People want to see this too fucking bad your little ego is hurt we're we've been i mean i'm a female comic i've been listening to this shit 
for 40 fucking years, the shit these guys would say. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And you know what? We have one fucking movie and it's killing it and it's speaking to people. And you're like, "Eh, I'm going to get man bad. You are all fucking cowards. (laughs) Cowards. Go Greta Gerwig. Fuck you. So, Brian, what's your reaction to that? Because she was speaking to you. Well, I went to to the double bill. Uh, I went to see The Sound of Barbie. I did. (laughs) And Barbie on the same. Oh, they were escaping, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Barbie, you know. They were escaping the Nazis. You know, it was that. Well, that's the Klaus Barbie movie. But uh, all right, sorry. (laughs) Sound of Fury. uh, Yeah, Barbie goes and saves sex trafficked kids from (laughs) ping pong. Ping pong. Okay. So I, I think it was a really. I think that I recommend that highly. Go to both. Both films, I think you're going to get a different. I just hope they don't. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I I'm very supportive. First of all, if Ben, Sh- I don't know why the Ben Shapiro. I mean, nothing screams alpha male like having a histrionic meltdown. You know, <laughs> over the Barbie <laughs> movie. I mean, like, yeah, that that really that really screams that that the incels are looking for a, a role model. There you go, right there. And uh, I just hope they don't. You know what I, I don't want to see all every. You know how Hollywood just has to do everything that there's a, a trend, so they're gonna uh, they're gonna have like an easy bake oven movie, you know? <laughs> Rubik's Part Cube the movie. Kitchen. It's gonna it's tired of being in the kitchen. You know what I mean? It's gonna be woke. It's gonna be it's gonna become sentient and leave the kitchen. I, I that's the movie I want to see the easy bake oven movie. All right, <laughs> I, I, I want to see. I think I hit four jokes in that one. All right, good. Very good. That was excellent. That's your best segment ever. I, I want to see Oppenheimer and Barbie combined as a sequel. Could I, wouldn't that be kind of cool? Like together? Oh, yeah. Drop a nuclear yeah. bomb on a, yeah. a random country, that kind of stuff. Eric, did you see Barbie or Oppenheimer? Yeah, I like Barbie. If you're going to get mad at a movie, get mad at Haunted Mansion. That was fucking horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't do well at all. <laughs> So speaking of films, and will we see new ones in the future, the WGA strike has hit over 100 days this week. The sag after strike's a little bit newer. They're on the picket line. They seem to be having fun. I had Judah Friedlander on last week, who's been on the picket line a lot. And But this strike, though, I was just talking to my friend. His wife is in the Writers Guild, and he said it's really having economic impact. Others are saying the same thing. Like, it's it's gone to the point where if the studio really have a, did have a sinister goal of breaking the union, they're at that point where writers are, are, are in pain. A lot of them. Well, it just shows how much they give a shit about, right. you know, so all you, the writers. In, I'm a writer's, writer's guild. Oh, you're writer's yeah. guild as well? Yeah, so, I, I've written on many shows. And it's. You two Emmys. So what do, you, what do you think of this? Do you think it's going to continue? Look, they just moved the Emmys Awards, by the way, from to ja- this j- week to January from yeah. September. So that gives a sense the industry might have a sense of how long this thing might go. What, what right. is your sense, Judy? I just, you know, people ask me about it all the time. People who are not in show business. And when, you know, uh, when you tell them that, you know, you create the show, you create you, it's your idea. You write a script and then these other people are making so much money off of you. Um, also this idea of these small writer rooms where, It used to be you got booked on a show as a writer, you know, and you had a job. You had a job for that season of that show, and you knew you were working. And now they want to have mini writer rooms. You're, you're, You're employed for a week. They take your ideas. They put them into AI. You know, sorry. And then they take all the money. They make all the money. They, it's, and, and these people who are creatives, are struggling and struggling and it's not right it's really not right people should be able to make a living it's it's ridiculous and i don't i'm sure brian no my residuals are like a fraction of what they used to be absolutely Absolutely. a fraction so brian Brian, you're in sag after i don't know if you're in wga yeah Yeah, i'm not i'm not in the writer's guild i'm in sag after and i'm getting lots of uh yeah go ahead question no i'm saying how long what do you think of that i mean i don't at least the writers they literally are meeting today for the first time since the strike yeah. began today literally today yeah. this is the first time sag after is a little bit newer strike it takes a little time for people to calm down and then they have discussions how do you think that's going to run for the rest of the year i mean i, I know it's speculation but what's your sense i, I sense I, I sense that they're going to do something with the a- actors i think they're actually scared of the more scared of the writers and they're and they're they're trying to like really be more uh, assertive and rough with them for some, for some reason, because I think they, they just, I don't know, there's something about the, the tone that they've taken 
and and they've changed the the dynamic as Judy was talking about about writing and everything else. All of the the way they've structured writing for shows, it's it's just like and now with AI, it, it's 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 become this uh, just incredible nightmare, and it's necessary to take this stand right now and right. really stop this now, now. This has right. to happen, but there's no way that that this can continue as it is. And and they did it to themselves with the whole streaming model. And no one wants to talk about that, that they've, they've you know, corrupted their own, right. uh, you know, system with these, just like Uber and, and, <laughs> you know, just like Uber and Lyft going into a city and, and with venture capital money, that's what happened with streaming services. They got all of this billions of dollars, so they didn't have to make money. They didn't have to release their numbers. They didn't have to do this thing. Right. And then had this explosion of stuff and then they just started cutting things and now they're scrambling they're putting commercials back on netflix right, right because they have to have this bizarre so it, 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 this could not stand the way it was and now it's just uh there's going to be a painful shakeout and and that's uh yep. out of solid area i'm not going to write anymore or say anymore <laughs> no more no more writing your jokes i had rami Yusuf, my friend rami Yusuf on a few weeks ago who created two shows actually more than two but his own show Rome, rami and he co-created mo on netflix and an animated show and there's really a sense that this is an existential threat to the wga like they want to they want to destroy the union because they want to go to a a model where you hire a couple of writers ai does yeah. does some other rewrites then you join it together and the, the you can't get rid of the actors like you can do digital for scene work whatever but you can't for like extras you can't do it really for say so they're going to have to make some deal for the writers this is like a last stand for them it really it's really like awful it's so awful i mean you know it's their it's it's we think up the ideas and then you take them and make millions and millions and millions of dollars on them and we don't get paid it's not right I'm with, now, Eric. Now you take the side of Apple and uh, Disney. What? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, what I think you, Bob Bob Biger's underpaid. I think. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> the callousness um, too by some of the comments. Oh, I know. Yeah, there it's was that one executive who said we're gonna like starve them out. Basically, yeah. he said it. Like, uh, yeah, they don't he, give a shit. They you could see their true colors. The the one thing I'm slightly confused with the AI, being honest, is like, I guess because the technology is gonna get better. Because I've tried to write jokes in AI and they're horrible. So is wow. it, we're just worrying about the future of AI, how good it's going to be. Because right now, I don't think it's that. I've never done anything on AI. I've seen that horrible. Yeah. Well, like, like, I can't imagine. Seriously, if you go online and you see the, like, like the most comic sock. So right. Like, it's, it's, true. AI it's true. Well, well AI no, only just, mimics human behavior. Right. right. You just right. wrote, but so, you ask AI to write a joke. It's like a dad joke. It's really bad. Yeah, right. Has, it's going to be a bunch of, if, if you thought, uh, you, you know, human hacks were bad, wait till you see <laughs> the AI hacks. AI hacks. Yeah. yeah. Nightmare of arms through the arms jokes. That's what the AI <laughs> is going to be. <laughs> like if you give AI, if you I ask AI for right. jokes, it gives you Carlos Mencia's act. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, come on. That's such an easy uh, chat. That's well. such a, that's such a cheap joke. So I, I asked AI to write a Seinfeld episode and it was three pages and it was horrible. I did. Mm -hmm. Did you really? Yeah. And. Well, they well they're start. not getting paid, so they're not going to write the full episode. <laughs> I, all right, let's talk about, we got a couple minutes left. I'll give you, we have two choices of, of topic. One is Clarence Thomas. The other is Olivia Newton-John's husband and daughter say that Olivia Newton-John visits them as a blue orb, which is a feel-good story. I just don't know. You know. Well, how is that a feel-good story? <laughs> but they believe She's they dead. Believe, but they all right, let them enjoy the orb. That's what I'm asking. Do you wanna, believe in it? I feel much better. I feel much better about this story than talking about that other crap we were talking about, the Trump shit. So oh. this is a good story that we've transitioned to something that I think is uh, Olivia's making a comeback, be it <laughs> you know from from the afterlife or whatever. Yes. Did it break into a did it break into a, a chorus of, of summer loving? Did they, did they, <laughs> they did a blue. I honestly awful. love you. Right? No, but can't, yeah. do you think in the bigger picture that people who die come back in, in can show themselves in certain ways? Is that I'm really getting at that? Not I'm not trying to make fun of Olivia Newton John's family. They believe the blue orb in the pictures is their mom or their late wife. If that makes them happy and brings them comfort. So be it. I'm happy for that. I lost my mom in May. If that happens, but like at the same time, you know, my mom, if she could come back to give me advice, of course, that's what she would do. She'd be back, like, or my dad died 20 years ago. Like mm -hmm. the idea that someone can come back, like one person can come back and show themselves, 
is hard to believe, but maybe there is something to it. I don't know. Okay. Judy, what do you think? Here's what I say. Uh, I remember um, as a young girl asking my mother, what happens when we die? And she said, uh, your battery stops. It's it. It's over. That's the end. And but having dead parents um, and dead best friends and a lot of dead people, because I'm 60, um, I love it when I dream about my parents. Oh. I love when they come to me. But I think all of that energy is we create that and we're reminded of them. I don't know what to believe, but I don't. I mean, where does your soul go? I don't know. Who the fuck knows? All I know oh. is that, you know, you're dead. It's over. I, it's, so there's no blue orb comeback. Like if uh, if you want it to be a blue orb comeback, yeah, then dead. enjoy. Let's right? get physical. 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 No Let's get physical. Yes. Why don't they let them have their joy? It wasn't to be like a come like instead of AI, it's BO, it's Blue Orb. And they come back and they do. Yeah. Eric, where do you come down on this? Do you think that people they, well they saw they saw like a blue light? I mean, it might have just been someone vaping and they just uh yeah. you know. in their no, it's a blue right. orb in, in their pictures because they said mom said she would come back and they watch paranormal shows. It's kind of weird. I get it. But still, I think if it brings you comfort, but then at the same time, you're standing right. in your picture looking for some blue orb. And right. I watched Mark Maron's special. I thought, I thought it was really funny talking about his long time, not long time, I guess, midterm girlfriend who died during COVID and a bird came and he's wondering if it was her and stuff like that. And you start wondering that. And that's just, Oh, I do that mind. all the time. My friend right. Bob died. I see him fly. Like I see this bird always. I'm like, hi, Bob. Like, but it's just my little, right. You know that that thing, and Brian's got nothing on it. Brian doesn't want to engage in it because it's well, too. I'm just saying. Uh, I heard that Rush Limbaugh uh, came back as a whole bottle. So uh, you know, as what? A... <laughs> as a what? I just thought of a funny word, gelato. That's the only thing. <laughs> he came back. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh came back. Gelato. People were eating him on the Everest. My son. Dean, they can't all be winners here. I'm in the lobby. No, that was you're in the lobby, and we're going to invite you up one day. All right, you guys have been great. I thought, listen, I thought dead celebrity coming back. Somebody just he died. I don't know a year ago. Who knows what? And he came back as a bowl of gelato. What do you want? From yeah, that, that I like might that. Be your best work. It looks like AI is writing your jokes. So, <laughs> Judy, where can people see more of you? Oh, you thank you, thank you, Dean. Uh, well, this weekend I'll be featured in the New York Times. They're doing uh, how she spends her Sundays. You know that section? Thank you. Uh, and uh, I am in Provincetown, Massachusetts until September 3rd at the post office cabaret and cafe uh, on Sundays and Tuesdays at 830 and Thursdays at 7. And then I am going to the Arlington Draft House in Arlington, Virginia, September 22nd wow. and 23rd. Okay. So that's you. And Brian, what other lobbies will you be appearing in <laughs> in the near future? I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be Fox News, MSNBC. I will be making it four. And then tonight I will be at the comic strip, 82nd and 2nd, two shows tonight, like 8 and 10 o'clock if you want to come down. Comic strip alive. And, and your website? 82nd and 2nd, uh, Comic Strip Live, and my website, brianscottmcfadden.com. Find me on social media, Brian Scott McFadden, comedian, whatever. I forget what my handles are. Just find me. I'm online somewhere. Brian? Brian's or he's in a lobby near you. <laughs> <laughs> you might find him in your lobby. And Eric, what about you, my friend? I just want to keep it simple. Just follow me on Instagram, Eric B. Comic, E R I K B as in boy, comic. Eric become well guys thank you very much I really appreciate it and Brian for the extra effort I really appreciate you I can go home now I can go you, home you now you can leave in fact you have to they the security go to one of the there. trucks are the trucks out there <laughs> oh, the food trucks are there <laughs> yeah they're, they're so they're good uh, all right guys we got to take a break we'll be back with more show after this